Good day, folks. Welcome back to Day Trip and Flies of the Day. Um, this episode, we worked for our fish, for sure. Um, there was tons of moving this day. We filmed most of these episodes kind of during a tougher time. Um, basically, it was a lot of that transition from summer to fall. And with the oddball kind of winter that we've been having, that transition was prolonged. Um, so water temps were still up. There wasn't a ton of hatches. Um, and we work for them, but if you, and you know, it's easy to go out and get them during prime time, but if you can, uh, if you can get them in those, in those tougher times, then it's rewarding. Um, and we love a bit of a challenge, so it's fun to try and go and figure them out. Um, we did not end up doing okay. Um, Rob started getting them pretty good on the scud and, uh, I tricked them with a pretty bright leech. Um, so those were the two flies of the day. Um, I'm going to twist one of each up now. So I've got a hook in the vise here. Let's go down and twist up some bugs. Okay, so here we are. Let's do the leech first. Um, so I think I mentioned a bunch. I like to use these jig hooks in the fall, um, especially that time of year that we were fishing. There's still quite a bit of uh, weeds in the water and but you tend to have to fish shallow. So having that hook point up definitely helps. Um, so this one, I've got a copper bead on. You can, I think that day I was fishing, I was using a gold bead, um, but gold, copper, um, either or, even red. Um, this is a red leech, so you could certainly use a red bead as well. Um, but I do like the gold and copper to kind of stand out a little bit. And then some red thread. And this is basically just a play on the M&M, &M, um, but I add a little bit of flash. I think I've tied this style before, um, but if you haven't seen it, you will now. So I've got some um, extra small gold wire that I'll just tie along the shank here and leave chill it out the back. Now the key to these um, M&Ms or BMWs, whatever you want to call them, is mostly in the feather selection. So getting these to turn out, what you're going to want to find is a marabou feather like this. So you can see how super long those fibers are, and that makes these patterns a whole lot easier to tie. Uh, so I'm not going to grab much. I might, I'll probably just, if I can show you here, like that's all I'm taking off the uh, stem. So you don't need a, a lot and you get these really kind of wispy uh, tail fibers that really move in the water. So I'll just capture that right on top with a few tight wraps and then wrap in front and then we can just bring our thread forward. Now I'm going to leave it kind of half a bead length back and I'll show you why. First I'm just going to twist this into a bit of a rope and then I just clip it at the top with some hackle pliers just to, uh, to make it a little easier. And then I want to get it kind of jump back just for my first wrap so I can cover up that tie-in. And then from there, super easy, just wrap it up the shank. And as you go, you will see it kind of start to flare out. And that tapered flare is kind of what you're looking for. This, this fly is really all movement and, and profile. Marabou really breathes in the water. So <clears throat> we'll do that. Now I'll grab this. I'll just try and sweep those forward just so I'm not trapping too many. And then I'll grab this wire and just kind of try to wiggle my way through best I can 
Again, trying not to trap too much. That works pretty good there. And then we will tie this off. So another thing we're, we're fans of, just gonna shorten this tail just a little bit. There we go. Um, another thing we are fans of in the fall is a little bit of flash. Um, I don't know what the reason is, but the fish definitely seem to come to a little bit of flash. So that's why I modify this thing just a little bit. So I'm just building a small dubbing loop here. And I'm gonna take some red Arizona Simi Seal and just build this loop. Now you don't need a lot. You want this to be pretty sparse. <clears throat> but you want those longer fibers kind of coming off. So hopefully you can see that is a super thin rope. And then I'll just brush this just a little bit to get those longer fibers to come off. And then from there, I'm just going to wrap this thing kind of like so. Tie it off with a few wraps. <clears throat> now, can you fish this thing just with the red marabou? 110%. But I love adding that flash. For me, it's a bit of a confidence thing. Certainly gets the fish. So that's such a sparse loop, you don't even really have to brush it. But when that thing slicks back, you can see it takes on a really neat profile. Uh, but all this marabou and dubbing is just going to pulse. And uh, as it sits under your indicator, and then being a jig hook riding like so, there's a ton of movement with that big heavy bead. That's an oversized, one size bigger um, head turner that I use on this too, forgot to mention that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the uh, little take on the M&M with a little bit of flash and it's deadly in red, in olive, in black. Um, you know, there's tons of different colors you can tie these in, but yeah, that's one of my personal little favorites, that thing. So it does work. I've got confidence in it. And uh, if you tie it up, fish it, uh, it's going to have its day for you. So um, let's move on to the uh, scud. Give me just a moment, as usual, to get a fresh hook and make things uh, all focus up. And I will be right back. All right, folks, and just like that, we are back. So, uh, size 12 scud hook, 330 seconds uh, gold bead, and olive thread. So, this is a super simple scud, um, as most of our stuff is. Um, this is something Rob's been playing with for a few years now, and he probably fishes the scuds more than I do. I might be just a little more stubborn. Um, but if he's really kicking my butt, then I will bring them out. But on this day, he decided to pull one out because the fish was stuffed with him. And lo and behold, weird. You match the hat, you catch the fish. Um, I stayed stubborn with the leech. And it was kind of... He'd get a few, I'd get a few, he'd get a few, I'd get a few. So they were both getting it done. But 
because this is a simple little one. It's good if you're just getting started tying um, or even if you're experienced, it's one you want to have because if you watch the video, then you know that it works. So um, I've tied a piece of opal tinsel down the back and I've got it right on top of the hook back here. And then I've just got this olive straggle string that I'll just wrap up the shank until we get to the bead here. And then we can go ahead and tie that off with a few wraps. <clears throat> Trim that out of there. Now I'm just going to give this a bit of a haircut just to kind of make way for this here opal tinsel. And I'm just going to put a little strip of that right along the back. And that just gives just a nice amount of flash to that pattern. My bead's getting a little goofy on me here. There we go. So from there, a couple turns of a whip finish. Trim that out. If you want to uh, glue those wraps, you can do so just prior to, to whip finishing. Straighten that thing out. And that's it. So um, simple. Might seem like it wouldn't fool them, but as you've seen, it certainly does. So the flash on the back kind of goes with our fall thing, although this thing you can certainly fish year round. But again, not much to it, but the fish love it and they'll eat it. So um, those are two of my favorite materials. Opal tinsel, as most of you know, um, deadly stuff. Use it for a cron body. You can, it was super deadly when we put it on that caddis. Um, and then when Rob started playing with it on this thing, it uh, there's something about it. And then straggle, well, you put that on a hook and fish are probably going to eat it. So there it is. Those were the two flies of the day. Um, Ta-da. So <clears throat> again, not much to them, but um, they work. So I hope you guys uh, are enjoying both of these kind of series uh, in tandem as we go. Um, again, they're, they're fun to put together. I'm super excited to do some uh, next spring and uh, be able to go out and chase hatches and, and do all that stuff. It'll be super fun, I think. Um, so there it is. You get the little M&M variant and the little um, flashback straggle scud. Um, two neat little patterns that both produce good fish. So that's all I got for this one. And until the next one, cheers and tight lines.